Good Monday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to what's making news, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. And after just an outstanding weather weekend, today a no noticeable cool down across north central Washington as we look down at the Wenatchee Valley. You can still see lots of blue sky out there. Temperatures were awfully nice with highs mainly in the lower 60s, back to where we should be for this time of year. A little bit of a breeze out there, but we are warming up as we move along. But let's go back to yesterday first. Man, it was a windy weekend. One. These are all the areas that saw wind gusts over at least 30 miles an hour. And you can see Wenatchee, we were at 39 miles an hour. We're on that left side column. And if you go up to the top right part of that, you can see Brewster, Omac, Oroville, also lots of wind. Douglas and Douglas County, a wind gust of 44 miles an hour. Luckily, no more wind in our forecast except nice weather. We should, we'll talk more about that coming up a little bit later on. And now here are some of the stories we're following for you tonight. Friends are raising money to help a Quincy family whose eight-year-old child died earlier this month in a California vehicle accident. New hours of operation start this week at the Town Toyota Center mass vaccination site. And the State House of Representatives returns to session tomorrow morning and high on its agenda, the proposal for a state capital gains tax. But first, our stop, top story tonight, a single vehicle accident injured an Afreda driver outside Warden, and the Washington State Patrol says it was a DUI. 23-year-old Natalie Ann Husey was injured and taken to Cadillac Medical Center in Richland just before noon on Saturday. Troopers say she was driving north on Highway 17 near the intersection with Highway 262 when her 2010 Dodge Charger veered, overcorrected, and then rolled. The crash closed Highway 17 for about two hours. Husey is likely to face a charge of driving under the influence after receiving treatment. Well, friends are raising money to help a Quincy family whose eight-year-old child died earlier this month in a California vehicle accident. Angel Alvarez Gonzalez was fatally injured in the April 2nd crash near Santa Nella. That's about halfway between Fresno and San Jose. Angel's mother, Guillermina, was driving and apparently lost control of the car on Interstate 5, traveling across the median and then into the oncoming lanes. Angel died when the car was struck by an SUV. His two siblings were also seriously injured. And you can make donations to help with the family's funeral and medical expenses at the web address on your screen. Well, new hours of operation start this week at the Town Toyota Center mass vaccination site. The center is closed today, but starting tomorrow, it will operate every Tuesday through Saturday, offering COVID-19 shots to those who just can't make it during the regular work week. The new hours start at 11 a.m. Tuesday through Thursday, 9 a.m. Friday and Saturday. You can make your appointment at the website or phone number shown on your screen. National Guard medics there are dispensing the Pfizer vaccine, which is approved for recipients as young as 16 years old. In other news, the State House of Representatives returns to session tomorrow morning. High on its agenda, the proposal for a state capital gains tax, which passed the Senate last month and did get through a key House committee on Friday. If approved and signed by the governor, the bill would tax the sale of some stocks and bonds at 7% rate on sales valued at over a quarter million dollars. Opponents say it's equivalent to an income tax, which is considered unconstitutional under Washington law. They promise to challenge the bill in court if it's enacted. Coming up next, the man who served as Chelan County's prosecuting attorney for nine years will retire next month. A new deal with the private landowner will keep almost 2,500 acres in Douglas County safe for sage grouse and other animal species. And Governor Jay Inslee says this, the improving weather is on our side as we continue to battle COVID-19. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. 
Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and Air, call Alpine Air. 662-6846. Family roles change with time. You may find yourself being an unpaid caregiver to a loved one. Caregiving can be rewarding, but also stressful. Taking care of yourself is vital. Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington has low or no cost services for unpaid caregivers, such as in-home support, care supplies, and counseling. Connect in your local area by calling Aging and Adult Care at 800-572-4459 and mention you're interested in caregiver support. If you're like me, you're already dreaming about the summer, enjoying it with friends and family in the backyard. Don't get discouraged with the chilly breeze of spring just yet. There is still work to be done and the warmer temperatures are just around the corner. If you've been thinking about when to get your backyard ready for summer, come on down to Blue Lagoon, now scheduling pool openings. Ask us why we think you should open your pool sooner rather than later. Call today, scheduling is filling up fast. Welcome back. In another news, the man who served as Chelan County's prosecuting attorney for nine years will retire next month. Doug Shea has held the elected office since 2012 and before that spent 24 years as chief deputy prosecutor. Shea announced he'll step aside on May 31st. Shea was elected as a Republican and under the state constitution, Chelan County commissioners must appoint the new prosecutor from a list of candidates put forward by the retiring prosecutor's party. Anyone appointed to the seat must run to retain the office in 2022. A new deal with a private landowner will keep almost 2,500 acres in Douglas County safe for sage grouse and other animal species. The Chelan Douglas Land Trust announced Friday it struck a conservation easement with the Badger Mountain ranch owner to help manage his property for cattle grazing as well as wildlife health. The sage grouse has lost much of its Washington habitat and its remaining population is primarily in Douglas County and mostly on privately owned lands. The Land Trust says private easements like this one help keep agriculture in balance with the local ecosystem. Last week, three Washington counties moved back from phase three to phase two of the state's pandemic re recovery plan because their rates of COVID-19 infection were too high. Governor Jay Inslee says the improving weather is on our side as we battle the virus. He launched a new campaign last week to encourage fewer indoor activities and more safe outdoor gathering. And my message is take it outside. Just take it outside. Have your meeting outside because it is so much safer to be outside. Look, the only way the virus can infect people is if we help it. And it is much easier for that virus to travel indoors than outside. So my message was, would be take it outside, keep your county open, save yourself, enjoy the outside. We know we can sit outside and have a cup of coffee in, in today's environment or dinner or a walk or anything else. We know we can do these things. So they're very available to us and, we're, and that is my fundamental message today. If we do this again, I'm very confident that we're going to do well. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come right here on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. Mary Maids of Wenatchee has been professionally cleaning and sanitizing homes and businesses in North Central Washington since 1998. Mary Maids uses commercial grade cleaners and virucides. Mary Maids has implemented additional safety and sanitation protocols. They are strictly following CDC guidelines for the safety of their clients and employees. For expert help with cleaning and sanitizing your home or business, call or look up Mary Maids of Wenatchee to schedule your free estimate today. As our students return to learn, the need is great for all positions in the Wenatchee School District. Can you see yourself in these hallways? Or helping support students? Maybe you're an excellent office administrator, or educator, or you have a love of sports. The Wenatchee School District is now hiring all levels of positions. You can make the difference in the life of a student and in your own life. Apply now at WenatcheeSchools.org.
Hi, this is Brian Snyder with Black Rock Asphalt Services here in Wenatchee, your local Black Rock seal coat company. Have you looked at your driveway or parking lot lately? Is it gray and oxidized? Does it have cracks that have not been taken care of? Or do you have striping that is pretty much non-existent? Please give us a call locally here, 509-665-9769. Learn more at blackrockasphaltsealcoating.com. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Congresswoman Kim Schreier says she's a champion of Wenatchee's proposed Apple Capital Loop Project, a $285 million effort to smooth transportation between the two sides of the Wenatchee Valley. That's good news for the city, which is seeking $140 million from a federal grant fund for the project. It's the fourth time Wenatchee has applied for the grant. In tonight's feature story, Schreier spelled out her priorities in a meeting last week of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. For trade, separate issue, it is a priority to ensure that the rural areas in my district are well connected. Uh, the Wenatchee Valley in my district is a prime example. Uh, the valley and surrounding rural areas uh, depend on an 11 mile Apple Capital Loop to carry more than 100,000 vehicles each day. The nearest interstate highway is 40 miles away and travel is really constrained by mostly two lane rural roads and two bridges. Uh, improvements in this loop are critical for trade, emergency services and fire safety. At the economic heart of my district is agriculture. Central Washington is home to some of the nation's largest uh, growers and exporters and farmers and growers face chronic challenges to get their products to market, including frequent road closures, port delays, and that distance from an interstate highway. Finally, I wanna talk about safety. Uh, Chelan County is highly vulnerable to catastrophic wildfires. And during the last fire evacuation efforts, it became alarmingly evident to my constituents that that same Apple Capital Loop was insufficient for safe evacuation. It's another compelling reason for those improvements. And finally, I'd love to highlight uh, climate action and environmental stewardship. Washington State uh, has, has invested millions of dollars to address downstream barriers that block Chinook salmon from reaching their spawning grounds. And headwaters located in our nat national forests are critical to having salmon populations thrive downstream. So in the coming weeks, I'm planning to uh, reintroduce the Legacy Roads and Trails Bill, which ensures dedicated funding to the U.S. Forest Service for projects that protect clean water and riparian habitat. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Man, I hope you had a chance to get out over the weekend. Could you believe that weather? 76 on Saturday, 82 degrees yesterday. We were one degree shy of tying a record of 83 yesterday. Don't think anybody's complaining though. What a beautiful weekend for weather. Today, not bad either. Lots of clear sky and blue sky out there today. A little bit of a breeze, but temperatures were much cooler. In fact, we were back to where we should be for this time of year. Unofficially, right on the money, 63 degrees, and that's our normal high right now. We started off at 48 and 41 is our normal low. Record high today, 82 degrees. That was set back in 2016. Record low, 29, and that was set in two 2008. Sunrise this morning, 6.04, now after 6 o'clock, and we're creeping up on 8 o'clock for sunset. Tonight, it'll be at 7.56. As we take a look at our Tuesday weather forecast, boy, lots of sunshine over the next about three days or so, and our temperatures will slowly climb each day, too. 70 tomorrow at Moses Lake and Afreda, 69 back in Quincy, Ellensburg, and Wenatchee, about 68 for a high tomorrow. Leavenworth, not bad at all at 67, and a nice warm up in Chelan too for your Tuesday at 68 degrees. We're going to stay with those mostly clear skies tonight. Light winds too. High pressure once again. It's dominating our weather pattern, dragging that nice warm air up and then bringing it back through Washington State. So mild overnight temperatures once again tonight, probably somewhere in the mid 40s. For Tuesday, it's going to get boring for the next.
next few days. Sunny and warmer temperatures will be on the rise too, as we just showed you. Predominantly upper 60s to about 70 for north central Washington on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, sunny, just a light breeze out there. Nice big ridge over us once again. And that'll make for an unseasonably warm day. Tri-Cities could touch 80 degrees on Wednesday. I think we'll climb into the middle 70s. And then a few more clouds for Thursday. There is an area of low pressure that's kind of breaking down our ridge and that'll cool us off a little bit as we get into the end of the week, but not on Thursday. Enjoy it. Mostly sunny and mild for Friday, increasing afternoon clouds and you can see this mo this clouds moving in. They're actually coming up from the southwest, which is a favorable flow to for us to yes, receive some much needed rainfall here in the Wenatchee area and it looks like Saturday might be the day we see some cloudy skies by this weekend and a 40% chance of rain. That'll be our best chance for the weekend. We're going to stick with about a 30% chance on Sunday, but we'll also see mostly cloudy skies with temperatures on Sunday pretty much where we should see them for this time of year into the lower and mid 60s. Let's take a look now at that seven day forecast tonight. 39 degrees for an overnight low 68 tomorrow 74 Wednesday. That looks like the warmest day of our entire seven day forecast, but pretty darn nice on Thursday too with mostly sunny skies and 73 71 with partly cloudy skies on Friday and then a chance for some showers both Saturday and Sunday with high temperatures then in the middle 60s. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Come on, I'm a certified technician. I was trained to take good care of you. Nine, I've only been to the dealer. I've been coming here for years. These guys are great. Look around. The BMW, the Jag, the Volvo, they're all waiting for regular service. Well, the BMW has a little computer issue, but that's nothing we can't handle. Come on in. From regular maintenance to computer troubleshooting, trust the Global Car Care technicians with your import, diesel-powered, or domestic vehicle. Global Car Care. They speak your car's language. Danke schön. <laughs> nice fish. Yeah, that's a beauty. We'll take that one. Oh boy, that hillside yeah, is steep. Work Sharp presents the Northwest Outdoorsman. Watch for new episodes of the Northwest Outdoorsman on the NCW Life Channel, your local TV station. In a world afraid of technology, one man, one show will bring you the newest innovations that may just change your life. This summer, Ray McNeil and your weekly tech update is your weekly tech update with Ray McNeil. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Monday to you. For the first time in 18 months, racing at Wenatchee Valley Super Oval took place with fans in the stands Saturday night. It was the Spring Sizzler and Tommy Wentz Classic with nearly a 100-car field turning out on a perfect day for racing after hours of chills, thrills, and spills. Four main event champions were crowned just before 11 o'clock. Greg Rentz and I had the call here on the NCW Life Channel. But they are three. Walker almost got in the wall, and that allows Griner to try to get the nose in front in the number 25. Hager hit the debris up there in turn three, but the win is going to go to RT Griner in the 25. How about it for Rupier? Jason Walker second. Pennington still heavy smoke as Navarrete comes home third. How does it feel to be back in the winner's circle in the main event here in the Roadrunner? Oh, it feels great. I've missed this track so much. It's just always so much fun to like be around here and even just like not even racing, just. Being at the track is just what I love, so. Coming around, green flag in the air. We're racing with the B-Mods. First main event of the season. And once again, just like the heat race, Hector able to get past Colby Holiday on the initial start, but Chad able to follow. So here we go, down the back stretch. In the three and four, he's on cruise control. Bart Hector Jr. wins the opener here at Wenatchee. Well, we made that adjustment right before this race and it helped the turn a little bit, but he was on me all race, so I was just trying not to screw up, so. Well, Bart, that's a big win for you, man. Chad Holiday coming up to congratulate you. A bear hug out of Holiday. You're the first driver not named Chad Holiday to win a modified main event here tonight, man. How's that feel? 
Hey, Chad's a great guy. He brought this class back to Wenatchee after what, 10 years? In the first race, we get 11 cars. That, that's pretty good, so keep coming back to watch this class. It's just gonna grow. One car off the pace is the 27. We got problems. Bartlett around, Rhodes around. Colby Brown involved. The zero. Uh oh, seat. look out, look out, look out. Everybody slow down. Come off the gas. The there 42 locked it up and hit the wall. I see movement in the 42. Race fans in the stands. This car is officially for sale. You can buy a winner tonight. Thomas Sanford wins it here at Wenatchee. Absolutely. Uh, they had an 18 car invert, so I saw that and was like, oh God, here we go. And we avoided a close, couple close calls, but able to keep the thing pretty clean, get to the front. And yeah, I always love racing Wenatchee. I mean, I got so much family here. Um, this is where I grew up. I got a bunch of family. Moses Lake that's here tonight. Uh, so it's, it's great to win in front of, you know, friends and family at the track that I grew up going to. So yeah, Wenatchee's always special for us. So that is not good. So hopefully somebody's able to talk to uh, the driver of that, that car. That is Chris Morang in the number 34. And, and Jimmy Zarazua is saying, hey, pull over. Exit stage right. Hey, you got time, so. And that safety truck comes flying in. And I think he was home. I think Garrett Huffines and Brad Didrick saw him coming and said, oh. Oh, yeah, he's going to try to get out of that car as quick as he possibly can. And Chris Morang saying, uh, get me out of here. I wonder if he's trying to turn oh. the fuel off. He's got to be, he is a little uh, upset about whatever the case may be there. It's fired up. Hey, race fans, it's been a long time since you've been here for it. Wipe the visor, adjust the five-point harness. Race fans, it is showtime. Luke Shaw in the 12. Oh, we're going to put fire. Oh, it's Seth Frazier in the 32. Another fire on Frazier now in the 32. He locks it up. And he was having problems with the motor all day, and it looks like it finally went. Comes to a stop immediately. Everybody stops. It's a red flag situation here on the race course with still just a little. The speed. driver getting out. A little bit of fire burning. Seth's out of the car, ladies and gentlemen. He is OK. Ooh. Contact between Doyle and Cavender as Cameron Doyle tries to make his way Look up to the top no. five. Tindrick Brad Tindrick. Caution is out. White flag in the hands of John Peterson. Harris with a shot on the outside. Farner shuts the door. Harris is going to take one final shot at it. They're not going to get to Maggard in time. He's going to cross him over. They touch off a two. Down the back stretch. Harris going to give it one final shot. Not gonna happen Frank Varner holds on what a race Harrison second Huff finds third unbelievable I seen him coming and I knew I had to do everything I could to keep him back there I'm just glad he raced me clean next time I can I can race him clean if that's the way it goes awesome job fun to race with Frank you've come here so many times finished second finished third had problems while leading, had problems in the top five. You finally got it done here at Wenatchee. And in a big one, the Tommy Wentz Classic, first ever race for the Tri-State Challenge Series, and you finally got it done here at Wenatchee. A big one here tonight, how's it feel? Uh, it's fantastic. I gotta thank my crew, my sponsors. This one's for my mom that's uh, a little Ill, Ill right now. Uh, my brother battling cancer, it's for you guys. There you go, Tommy Wentz Classic main event for the Dix Heating and Air Conditioning Thunder Cars. First place went to Spokane's Frank Barner, second to Wenatchee's Brent Harrison, third to Sealess Garrett Huffines. Northwest Mini Stock Tour main event win went to Sammamish's Thomas Stanford, second to Spokane's Scott Murphy, and third to Spokane's Alex Bartlett. The first main event of the 2021 season for the Holidays Custom Muffler B-Mods, checkered flag flew for Efrena's Brett Bart, Hector Jr., second went to Chad Holiday, and third to his son Colby. And and it was the all East Wenatchee one, two, three finish for the Plum Perfect Roadrunner main event with first to RT Griner, second to Jason Walker, and third to Alberto Navarrete. Jeremy Anders and the gang at WVSO barely have time to catch their breath as they'll have two days of racing coming up this weekend with the first 51st year celebration, Canutes and General Contracting Pro Late Model 100 Saturday and the Leonard Evans 150 on Sunday. Get your tickets at WVSO.com.
Well, let's stay local for the next round of results as we, uh, it was sweep or be swept weekend in high school baseball. On Friday, Chelan swept Cascade. Efreda took care of Quincy. On Saturday, it looked similar with Moses Lake knocking off Wadadji. Eastmont swept Brewster. Manson took two from Waterville Mansfield. Amira Cooley Heartland had no trouble with OMAC. Liberty Bell swept Lake Roosevelt and Okanagan to edge Tenasket twice, 8-4 and 7-3. In fast pitch softball Friday, Royal swept Cascade. Pateras and Manson split with the Nannies winning the opener 17-4. Trojans took the nightcap 20-5. Wenatchee swept Kashmir. Quincy took care of Waluk. On Saturday, Moses Lake swept Eastmont. Omak shot down Chelan. Brewster topped Tenasket. And in boys soccer on the weekend, Friday, Okanagan beat Warden 4-2. Cascade blanked Royal 2-0. On Saturday, Kashmir got by Efreda 1-0. Waluk topped Chelan 6-3. Moses Lake shut out Eastmont 1-0. Wenatchee beat Quincy and Tenasket topped Manson. Also, tennis. Get this. Saturday, Eastmont boys and girls teams topped Wenatchee 4-3. It was the Wildcats' first win over Wenatchee in 31 years. Mariners took two of three from Houston over the weekend at T-Mobile Park, including Sunday's 7-2 victory. Mitch Hanniger continues to play well at uh, both in the field and at the plate. He had a let's see, triple, double, three RBIs in the victory. Nick Margavich uh, went to four innings, one hit ball, allowed two runs. He went out of the game with an injury. The bullpen held the Astros right there, though. That one hit that he gave up, that was it for the day. Seattle welcomes the best team in baseball in town tonight with the Dodgers coming in for pitch at 7-10. Rest of the American League West on Sunday. Nate Lowe's walk-off RBI single to the bottom of the 10th gave Texas a 1-0 win over Baltimore. Oakland also a walk-off error win in the bottom of the ninth. They beat Detroit 3-2. Twins and Angels were postponed. Whew, that's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Granstrom. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And finally tonight, for the second year in a row, there will be no official trip for Wenatchee Valley delegates to visit their sister city in Misawa, Japan. The COVID-19 pandemic has led to the cancellation of both trips. Ordinarily, the cultural exchange sends representatives to commemorate the Trans-Pacific flight of Clyde Pangborn and Hugh Herndon in 1931. The sister city relationship was established on the 50 year anniversary of the flight back in 1981. Organizers with the exchange say they're already making plans with fingers crossed for 2022. All of our fingers are crossed. Now let's check in with Eric Granstrom for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Eric. Well, Grant, be sure and join us for a Tuesday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. I believe I'll be sitting in for Dan once again. And uh, boy, we've got a cornucopia of things to get to, including talking about uh, local baseball. We'll broadcast a baseball game here on the NCW Live Channel for the first time since the spring of 2019. So it's been a while that we've done baseball. Joel Norman will help us out with that broadcast. We'll talk about that and plenty more on a Tuesday edition on a Sunsplash Tuesday edition of Wake Up with Valley. So be sure and join us tomorrow morning for that at 7 o'clock. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Eric, and get some rest. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. are you paying for adult family or assisted living. Epla Dolan Retirement and Assisted Living offers one-bedroom apartments for one affordable price. Their rates are all-inclusive. No nickel or diming or sudden increases, just one set price. You or your loved one will receive good food and excellent care in a relaxed, home-like environment. Stop on by for a tour to see if the Epla Dolan family is the right choice for you. Family-owned and operated Epla Dolan Retirement and Assisted Living in Kashmir. Affordable care. Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award-winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan.